When I was 10, a margin was a pink line on the side of the page that helped me keep my schoolwork tidy. But at that young age, Rabia Gur already had a practical grasp of the concept of the profit margin. Although still a teenager, she's already a highly successful entrepreneur with an incredibly busy schedule. How does a newcomer take on the well-established international giants? Especially when the startup is a tiny business operated by a fresh-faced teenager. It was perhaps to Rabia Gur's advantage that she didn't have an MBA when she started off, so she couldn't be intimidated by the true scale of the challenge she had taken on. Instead, she relied on her instincts and her understanding of what her target market was looking for. And then, as a true child of her generation, she researched online to find answers to her questions. This was the beginning of what is now a hugely successful business. Starting a business is hard enough. It's even harder when you're 14 years old. But Rabia Gore took an idea and a passion and she turned it into a big corporate. Now, of course, living this lifestyle means you have to get up at the crack of dawn to catch her for a quick chat before she hops on a plane for an international business trip. Rabia no longer runs a one-woman show, but she's still a hands-on manager. Rabia. Hi. How are you? Good things with you. Good thanks. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Starting a business at 14 years old, that must have been quite a challenge. What was the journey like? I thought it out as a simple idea. As a young woman, I'd found a specific interest or passion in makeup in the beauty industry. And I saw the gap in the market for an affordable, inclusive beauty brand, especially a more tech native beauty brand, because a lot of the beauty brands we have currently within South Africa are not using social media and the internet to communicate with their consumer, engage with them, and supply them with educational content. But this wasn't your first business venture. You started selling buckets, if I'm correct. I was the first entrepreneur venture. When I was in school, the people in my classroom decided that they were too lazy to walk over to the bucket to throw their trash away. So I bought those little buckets and sold it to them at like a profit and then they bought those buckets from me and then they used them as little trash cans on their desk. The second one was every weekend my dad and I, my dad would take me to this plaza type situation. Kind of a bulk buy place. Like a bulk buy place and we would buy stickers and when I was in grade four stickers were the biggest thing. So every break I would take my table and go outside and start selling stickers and everyone would come back for me. But now, of course, being in school, having a business, how did you manage to fit everything in? It was very active. It got to a point where I would be up till 3 a.m. in the morning packaging orders, then up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get ready for school, go to school, extra murals, assignments, exams. And one morning I was actually fatigued, like I was so tired. You could see it in my soul, you could see it on my face, I was exhausted. And I walked into the kitchen, and my mom said to me, Rabia, you're not going to school today, are you? So I said, no. And she's like, you're not going back ever, are you? So I said, no, I'm not going back. And, and I just never went back. It must have been quite a decision for your parents to let you actually quit school. You need to remember that I was running the business for a year and a half, so they'd already seen the growth within the business for that year and a half. They'd already seen what I could do in a year and a half, putting half my attention into the business. So I think they mm. weighed out the pros, weighed out the cons, and they were like, cool. What were some of the challenges that you faced after, you know, leaving school? When I just dropped out of school, I had all of this freedom and all of this liberation, like, at my fingertips, and I took a bit of advantage of it. And there were days when I would wake up at 11 a.m., watch TV, like, the entire day. And what I really appreciate about that dark period of time is the fact that my parents never got involved. In that, I realized for myself, like, one day I woke up and I'm like, you know what, I'm needing to do things. I'm needing to make things happen. Things are needing to happen in my life because I needed to prove myself 10 times over. I guess it was just that awakening that, like, you need to do something. Speaking of doing something, I actually have a meeting. So is it cool if we catch up in a little bit? Please. <laughs> The members of Rabia's team have complete confidence in their teenage boss. By doing online research, Rabia learned everything she could about the production of cosmetics. This enabled her to create products that filled the gap between high-end and pharmacy brands. And with a supply side in hand, she could then focus on building her online business. Rabia has a grasp of the industry and the markets that many CEOs would envy. Sorry about that. Not a problem at all. Who are the people that you're particularly trying to market to with your product? 
beauty is for him and her and they and them and everyone in between. There isn't really a specific person that we appeal to or gender or race. Ideally though, our consumer would be tech native, very uh, social media savvy, brand conscious. What are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned? As cliche as it sounds, take everything as it comes, one step at a time. Everyone has a goal and a vision. Everyone has somewhere that they want to be and they have this idea stuck up in their head. And every time some of those things don't come through or happen, you beat yourself up about it. So just trust the process and trust that everything is taking its course and, and going to happen. What is your message to young entrepreneurs in South Africa? Sometimes the thing that you look at as your very disadvantage is actually your biggest advantage, right? So sometimes you might think, I'm so young and, and who would take me seriously? Or what if I fail? Sometimes that could be your biggest advantage because you're so young you have nothing to lose no one's really looking at you my dad always says to me the worst someone can say is no or the worst that can happen is it doesn't happen yeah. so then what happens where do you see yourself in 10 years i see myself as a much more wise more educated experienced individual i see myself as a better manager of people i see myself as a better team player and a better human being overall well thank you so much for spending time with me today and i know you have a flight to catch so i don't want to keep you for too much longer but i wish you all the best in your business thank you so much for having me and i'm so sorry that i've got to run and i have such a short period of time See, it just goes to show it doesn't matter how young you are. As long as you have a passion and a love for what you do, any obstacle can be overcome.